I'm going to challenge you to do gratitude, just write down three things you're grateful for every single day for the next two weeks. Awesome. Some of them did it and you could tell that all, actually they were all pretty motivated straight after watching that clip and from what he was talking about and did the they examples do it immediately there? that he showed. Yeah, I got them to, to write down three things that they were grateful for that had happened um, during that day nice. so far. And it was a pretty rainy day and I remember like, walking around the classroom looking at what some of the kids had written. Some had been like, I'm grateful for my mum and for her giving me a lift to school because it was raining today. Nice. Little things like that. <laughs> there were other kids that like hated <laughs> the idea of it because they thought it was like a chore and it was kind of forced upon them. Like, okay, I can see the, their side of view, their point of view of that because um, I guess if you, if you can't really tap into... The feeling. Yeah. yeah. Or if you haven't been through something that's kind of shaking you up a bit, you, you're going to say, like, why? why do I need to write down these things? Things are fine. Whereas if you've been through, you've gone through a little bit of shit and you start thinking, eh, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful. Those kinds of people, they I noticed that those kids, they were the ones that, that did it more consistently. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow, interesting. The, the, the kids who have gone through some shit, had traumas, had troubled pasts, you found they did the gratitude practice more consistently, probably because they found something, it, res- it was resourceful to them. Mm. They found benefit. Yeah. I'm not saying that those kids that that weren't on board so much with it last year wouldn't be on onto it now. Mm. Um, oh, interesting. But I've set the task again to <laughs> my year 11s, or well, don't say year 11 because I've got year 10s in that class too, my VCE class, my year nines and my year sevens. I'm interested to see how many of the year sevens actually do it because they're so young. Well, like we saw with our child geniuses, mm. age sometimes doesn't matter as much. Mm. But just from the perspective that... They haven't gone through as much, maybe? Yeah. I'm not saying that they haven't, Yeah, but it's but a possibility. Or, or that less time to go through or things. Or they just don't have that um, level of emotional yeah, intelligence just yet. Yeah. They can't really... They don't really know yet how to empathise. Yeah. Test it. Yeah, that's so. That's what I said. I said this is your your holiday homework, and then one's like, "Do you, do we really have to do this?" I'm like, "Do we?" So you're asking me, "Do we really have to think about the good things that have happened throughout my day, and acknowledge them?" You're telling me you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to tell me what you're grateful for. What makes you feel good? That's such <laughs> a good way to put I'm it. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> just just think about the words that are coming out of your mouth yeah, for a second. Yeah. Think about the words that just came out of my mouth. Yeah. And that's then report back to me. Did you get a reply or was that like, okay? It was just kind of a bit like a little nod and then yeah, we'll move on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. But um great. Fuck yeah. But we'll see if, if we'll see if they've remembered. I haven't I haven't reached out to them too much. Earlier this week I said, Don't forget about your gratitude journals. Da da da. So I might send them a, another message tomorrow and say, Don't forget your journals. It's the only holiday home- homework you've got. <laughs> it's interesting you say that because when I spoke to to Jordan Potts, um, he we spoke about that. Oh, we spoke about it at some point, and he inspired me to. And that was actually on my other podcast with Orphic Education, and he inspired me to. He does that with his kids that he coaches. Mm. Um, he makes challenges for them as well. It's like, just see what happens. You know, it's like, oh, why do I have to do this? Oh, what if you did? Just mm. what if you did? Like, what could happen? Just try. Mm. Just see Get what happens. Get rid of the hypothetical. Just, just do it. Yeah. And that inspired me to start doing it. And I've been doing it for about the last, feels like about a month or, or in a bit. And it's the first thing, one of the first things I do when I wake up. I go to my journal and I write three points. Mm. And it really, it, 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 it has a strong mental anchor. Oh, it does. 100%. Like, and when you do it in the morning and you have a routine that helps anchor you and gratitude is part of that, movement is part of that, mindfulness and meditation is part of that, Mm. getting outside in the sun is part of that. It's like, no matter what else happens that day, you are so much more primed to deal with the adversities of life. Yeah. Just those daily affirmations like, I am. Yes. Exactly. Do you do do that? I don't do it in in the mornings. I, I reflect 
on the day I prefer to yep. before I go to sleep yeah just so That's great. it helps me go to sleep um, a bit better but I know that one of my colleagues he gets up in the morning he does daily affirmations he'll do like a little meditation mm-hmm. and then we'll roll into work nice um, it's really just w- whatever works for you absolutely um, but like with anything so I was doing the, the three things that are well, not necessarily it was one thing one good thing that has happened to you today or the what's the best thing that's happened to you today second thing was who are you most grateful for today and why and the third what are you looking forward to most about tomorrow so that's what I was doing and I did that for maybe like almost 300 days consecutively I didn't miss a day Mm. and then I can't remember why I stopped I, I must have just I just kind of fell off the bandwagon like with anything that you do if you do it enough sometimes it, it kind of starts to lose its effect I'm like, right, i'll just stop doing it for a while because then I, I was feeling like i was becoming too repetitive You're with becoming a chore with yeah it started to become a little bit chore like yeah um and so I, I i changed it so that rather than just writing all these things down just being present and and hugh speaks about this because he had there was this kid he went and taught in remote india um what's this I'm about to explain. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, went and taught in remote India, and there was a kid named Stanzin, and he couldn't pronounce the TH. So, he would say this instead of uh-huh. this. And he said that at multiple points throughout the day, Stanzin, he would be sitting with his friends. This kid, I think he was in grade three, um, would be sitting with his friends and he go, sir, sir, this. And we'll point to his friends. I'll say, this person, this person, this person. And he was in that moment acknowledging that that was good. Or, and he's got another little story where we're stunned and he's cut the toes off his shoes because he's had those shoes since he was in prep. The toes? Yeah, like the ends or the ends of his shoes. Okay. Like, so his toes can hang out. Yeah. Because the shoes are too small. Oh. But he puts his shoes on before he goes outside and he's like, sir, this, or he's got a hat on, this. Like grateful for those things that he oh. has. Um, so I started adopting that into my day-to-day when I wasn't doing the, the gratitude at night. I was just, th- I wasn't <laughs> just standing there going, hey, this. <laughs> <laughs> but you were thinking about and it. In my head, I was going, yeah, ah. this moment, what that person just said, what that person just did. Huh. And... Um, I maybe like a few days ago I started getting back on track onto doing like the the daily gratitude and just acknowledging and I got my mum onto it as well and in our family group chat every day she'll send through hers Beautiful. and we'll send through ours. That's so good. Actually, it's just me and her, my brother and sister. <laughs> they they haven't gone on board with it. I'm like, come on, just do it. <laughs> just yes. Just give it a go. Exactly. Um. But yeah, and that that definitely does have, it's so powerful just to acknowledge the good things that are going on throughout your day because you might have had <sighs> yeah. a seemingly pretty average day, yeah. but then there's just that one thing that, that yeah. someone did, yeah. like, oh, someone held the door open. Yeah. Or... They smiled at you when you walked yeah. through the street. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Or well, for me, like, what happens, like, just kids at school saying hello yeah. as you're walking past. Yeah. Or stopping and having a chat. Nice. Like, those sort of things. Those sort of little moments. Um, and just knowing or just acknowledging that, that they're the good things that are going on. It, it it makes you that average day just a bit better. Absolutely. You know that ah, there is good in every single day. There is. You've just got to look Not for it. it. Yeah. And it might be so small and so subtle on some days. And then others, it's just like, wow, this day was awesome. But there's always going to be something. Something that's, There's always a little win. you just got to find the little win in each day. It reminds me. It's like find the little win in each day. It reminds me. I, I was listening to a podcast of a Holocaust survivor. Um, and a credible story on Joko Willink's podcast. It's like four hours of just heavy. Mm. Just heavy experiences that she was telling and retelling in her, I think, a book. Or her brother's book. Family member's book. Um... The point is, how would, it makes me think, how would someone like that be able to find that, right? It's the worst Mm. possible environment 
in a concentration camp. You are starving, you are hungry, you are cold, you are beaten, you're, 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 you're fa- you just saw your father get taken off to be died. Um, you, you, you're seeing people die every day, you're shot, you're, you're getting your hair shaven off your body to uh, uh, dehumanize you and make you just all the same. Time after time, just constant um, pain. And she made a comment, it's like, she said, what kept me alive, and I'm paraphrasing, what kept me alive was I could never take away my hope. Mm. My hope inside that, that things could get better mm. and that things could change. And I think that hope ties into this gratitude. Yeah, 100%. So that's what it reminds me of. And, it, and it, I think, all right, what if that was me? Where could I find hope? Because every th- nothing lasts. No. Nothing. The sun will one day explode, implode, whatever you want to technically call it. Earth will one day be gone, or just a shell of what it once used to be. Everybody you know, and love, and ever met, is going to die. I've said this before. Mm. I will keep saying it <laughs> because people don't think about it. Yeah. And I'm going to force it down your throat until you. I shouldn't say it like that. I'm going to remind people of it as I remind myself daily of it. And so I say that there's a finality to, to life, but that's also that finality, that temporary nature of it mm. helps foster our gratitude. Mm. Just to make the most yeah. of what you've got and appreciate what you've got. Like it's all relative. You can't go saying like, and Hugh has said this, it, when you are reflecting, when you are being grateful, it's not necessarily saying that I'm grateful for having a roof over my head because I've always had that roof over my head. So what I need to be grateful for is, yes, I, I'm still appreciative of that, but you need to be more, you need to be grateful for things that are, are relative to you and, and your situation yeah. and what's going on with you. For sure. Um, Makes it more powerful. Yeah, if I'm just saying, oh, I'm grateful for, for air I having, breathe. Yeah, well, is Does that really? Are you gonna connect with that? Yeah, as much really as if you, you say that I'm, um, I'm grateful for, um, like my mom and for for having a conversation with her, just having a laugh with her yesterday, yeah. like about whatever. Yeah, like you connect more with that than. Oh, I'm grateful for the air that I breathe. Like, yes, still be grateful for it. Still acknowledge that. That's obviously important because if you're not breathing. (laughs) Algae. Yeah, grateful for the seaweed. Seaweed. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's all all going to be relative. That's a great uh, little tip or technique and to making gratitude practices more sustainable and more impactful is making them very personal. Mm. Um, Because that's how you connect. Exactly. It's a great point. Yeah, and, and I think this, and I've brought it up before in this podcast, but uh, speaking to Jeremy, I remember it's like this time, it's like you know, we're fortunate that we can look out this window and, and the city's not on fire, yeah. that there's not violent protests in the street, that we're not a city that is getting overwhelmed by thousands of cases of, of, of a virus, um, where, where police brutality isn't as uh, rampant. Um, gun laws are way different. You know, there is relatively, it appears to be, and in comparison, statistically, more peace. Mm. And living in Melbourne, Australia, and this country, it's like that. When I see what happens around this world, I feel very grateful to be in such an amazing place. Uh, yes, it has its, its shortcomings, but shit. Not many other places that probably top it. Mm. Just um, it, And I do think about that sometimes. Like, imagine if you were born somewhere else, like in another South country. South Africa. How different would your life be? Yes. Like, would I still be, would teaching be the career path that I took? Would like my sport what opportunities yeah. would I have had over there exactly yeah makes you think mm. 